I'm a bit late to the European hill climb party, being from a country that has a minimal hill climb scene. It's not like hill climbs don't exist in Australia, they are just at a much lower profile. The scene however got a boost a couple of years ago, with ex-Formula 1 designer Malcolm Osler running a modified Formula 3 chassis, lifting the standards as he dominated over a couple of years. Couple that with the internet giving access to the audience. In this video I'm introducing the next model I'll be simulating, common hatchback, that is seen running in European hill climbs. The benefit of this model is that it exists in a range of performance levels, so we can see how or if there's corresponding aerodynamic performance. A little context is there is a comprehensive regulation set that European hill climb uses. The latest form of these regulations is a balance of performance named the FIA performance factor that exists as an interactive web page. There is a bunch of stuff related to engine and weight, but we're interested here in aerodynamics. Going by the performance factor equation, the more aerodynamics, the lower the number and the higher the performance class. I really think this is a clever rule set because it allows all sorts of configurations with dimensions driving performance. I spent a little time entering numbers into this page just to see how the error can be used and there is quite a bit of performance available at a low level, which is where this video is starting. So using a common mid-80s hatchback to Europe, I'm going to add error bits without altering the performance factor by anything significant. Using a couple of cars competing in this year's hill climbs as reference, we'll get to see if the garage engineering is plausible or not. Running the baseline for this model, it is expected to have a large amount of lift, particularly at the rear. The results were impressive with a lift to drag ratio of a positive one, twice as much from the front as the rear. It's a surprising amount for the front as the other hatchback model I've run gives more lift at the rear but none at the front. Looking at this model there is significant separation at the front which would contribute to this car having almost 50% more drag. However this also has a larger frontal area. Adding the standard GTI rear hatch flap it reduced the drag by 9.5% and the lift by a large 17% with a 30% reduction at the rear. These GTI type rear spoiler flaps are essential part of a hatchback's aerodynamics. This paper from the 1980s is where this idea was being developed through calculating a stability index. Building on this in the third simulation, aimed at performance, the flap is angled up to be an actual spoiler, reducing lift and adding drag. In this configuration, there is now downforce at the rear. The problem is now just at the front. I really didn't think a front could be this bad. Volkswagen doesn't seem to be trying here, but this bonnet crease suggests they couldn't do much else, given the level of manufacturing. Applying a solution to the next sim that I wouldn't normally try, but it is only to illustrate the effects a 70s or 80 front air dam, similar to these. They incorporate all the misunderstandings of aerodynamics, pushing the air rather than letting it pull, that is relative to the atmospheric pressure. It works more by accident than design, halving the front lift but also doing the same for the rear. What has been done is that it is accidentally created a splitter. All the downforce comes from the lip of the air dam, even with separation. Next I lowered the car by reducing the diameter of the wheels. With the rough underside, the downforce was reduced because the boundary layer. It is more like turbulence builds under the floor almost completely removing any downforce. Drag is also reduced, likely by the frontal area being reduced. If the floor isn't conducive to downforce, having it closer to the ground will not necessarily be a benefit. Adding a flat splitter under the air dam with skirts restores the rear downforce and is matched by the front lift. If the body, mostly the bonnet and wheel arches, didn't produce 304 newtons of lift, the car should now have 200 newtons of downforce, similar to the other hatchback I've tested. I now added 50 millimeters to the spoiler, adding 20% of not much to the rear, and now there's just 10% of the front lift left. This is a great illustration of the aerodynamics connecting the front and the rear. A first guess wheel arch vents add another 10% of downforce to the rear, 
and there is 10% less lift at the front, probably from the wheel arches creating a separation of the low pressure above them. But then that doesn't explain the extra rear downforce. Using the centerline plot, the front axle is at 2.47 meters, and there is a difference after that point. Considering the reduction of pressure before the rough floor, there is therefore less turbulent mass flow, such that there should be less pressure build up under the floor. Mapping the pressure over the surface of the wheel's circumference will give an idea how it builds in the wheel arches. There is an indication there is low pressure just at the wheel arch vents. The theory of the wheel arch states that the wheel vents increases drag and downforce. My thought was that the rotating wheel has high pressure above, but maybe not. The low pressure on top of the wheel is distributed over the car's body, which means overall there is more surface area of the body, which is a net benefit to reducing the front lift.